Well, today I'm grinding up some uh, malted barley, heavily peated uh, malted barley for a, uh, a smoke bomb. I'm going to be uh, infusing this stuff, not 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 uh, brewing it like a regular beer with a sparge and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I'm cutting it, milling it a little finer. I'm not milling it so fine that all the um, the hulls are, are, are minced up and, and ground to a flour. But I am milling it so that the um, inner sperm inside is all, all ground into smaller smaller chunks than you'd normally find. I'm not, not doing a sparge, so I'm not worried about leaving those holes as, as heavily uh, intact as you normally would. And again, I'm not grinding the, um, the holes that fine. You're going to get tannins and stuff coming out of them. But I am going to, just going to um, infuse this with some hot water in a barrel. So it's going to be more or less like making a, a cup of tea, except it's going to be about a 120, 130 litre cup of tea. Is the... Uh, grain getting milled down, here's the remainder of the grain I've got to go yet, and uh, this is my grain mill version 2, with the uh, larger motor and a uh, variable speed controller on the other side there. G'day, so uh, today I'm doing a uh, whiskey uh, wash, uh, full grain conversion, there's no, no sugar involved. Um, what I've got here is my uh, hot, hot liquor tank, hot water tank. I'm just heating up uh, just on 80 to 90 litres of water in there. Uh, I've got my, um, what will be my mash tun. It's a um, food grade brew barrel. Uh, well, it came with mayonnaise, I think it's been washed out thoroughly. Um, I've used it for a few years now. Um, and uh, I've just sprayed it with um, star sand and left it to dry for a while. Uh, so star sand sort of solution in the spray bottle there. And in here I've got the um, all my malted grain bill, which is relies really heavily on a on a peat smoked um, barley. Uh, you can see uh, it's it's quite fine compared to what you'd normally get out of a, a, a um, barley roller or a grain roller for a, for a brewer. Still got the, the holes are fairly intact, but I'm not doing a sparge. Um, I don't care about um, having a, a, a husk or husk layer for filtering for watering. It's it's um, all just going to go in here, and you can think of it as making a giant cup of tea. Uh, I don't want to. I didn't want to mill up the holes. Um, you can see the the, the the holes are fairly intact. I didn't want to mill the holes right up and make a uh, like a. Um, a flower because then you uh, get all the quite sort of literally tea tea kind of things quite stringent flavors and stuff that come out of the hulls I didn't want to have those I just want the, um, the carbohydrate conversion in this I don't want any of that that nasty stringent stuff carrying across so uh, I'll pop that into here and we'll just wait for this to get up to temperature careful not to create a nice big plume of dust and flour and cracked up endosperm and whatnot. So that's uh, 25 kg of uh, malted barley that's been ground fairly fine, com again compared to what you normally would with a roller mill. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, this will be up to probably about 60, 70 soon. I'm going to probably drop about 20 litres uh, of um, hot liquid into there uh, and mix that in thoroughly so I'm not shocking the grain. Uh, a lot of people add the grain to the liquid. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, I prefer to add, add it the other way around. Um, I've got a, 
a dirty great uh, mixing paddle here that I use. I got this incredibly cheaply, just one of those things you happen across and go, I'll need that, and grab it uh, from a, um, a discount shop. I think they even had it marked wrongly, but um, so I got that. Uh, I'll be able to stir this stuff up and get um, get it to like a thick paste, ready for to, to add the uh, water at a much higher temperature. Uh, it'll just if I get that wet at a lower temperature, like I'm talking, if I add, add the water in about 60, it's going to drop it down to around 40 probably degrees. I'll have, have a little bit of a rest at 40 degrees, and then. Um, I'll add hotter water in to get it up to the 65 degrees, there about 64 degrees that I wanted to sit at. Maybe a bit lower, maybe maybe a month sits. It's for the difference, about 63. Your um, beta, beta amylase enzyme in the malt here likes to, in, to convert uh, sugar to carbohydrates to sugars at about 60 degrees centigrade. And your alpha amylase likes to um, work at about 70. Um, you get a lot more fermentable sugars at a lower temperature, when I say lower, but at the, at the 60 degree centigrade end. Um, so I'm going to err on that side because I know I'm going to lose a few degrees, I'm going to let this stand for a while. Uh, so if I started at 63, it's probably going to be edging back a few degrees. Um, so I'll drop some water into here, give it a bit of a stir, and uh, wait for the uh, rest of it to heat up. A little bit of string out of the bag. So I've added enough um, water and now I'm, I'm sitting on about, about close to 50 degrees in there. Um, which is where I'd normally, if I was doing a, a rest, stage rest um, brew, like a boil in the bag kind of a controlled brew, I'd do a 50, 50 60 and 70 degree uh, rest stop. There's not that much control with, with uh, doing an infusion on this, this volume for me. So um, that'll, that, that's cool just as it is. Um, the idea of getting all, the way I get all the grain uh, hydrated in there and moist is that when I start adding my hot liquor out of the um, liquor, liquor, hot, hot water out of the hot liquor tank, um, later on, um, it's going to infuse faster. I'm, I'm not going to have the problem with um, uh, dough balling and all that kind of stuff in there. Uh, it's going to the, the wet grain and the holes are going to draw the liquid through it a lot faster. Um, so what I do now is I wait for the um, tank uh, over here to, to heat up to I don't know, 80, 90 degrees and I'll um, drop the, the rest of the um, liquid into here. Uh, I've gone a little bit of lean on my water um, doing it this way. Um, normally I'd, I'd do a um, about a 1 kg of grain to about 2.5 to 3 litres of water or slightly over. I'm going higher than that here, I think I've got about 80, 80, 90, degree, uh, 80 90 litres of water in there total, minus whatever the, the 10 or 15 I put in here. Uh, and the reason is I'm not doing a sparge, um, so there's no added amount to uh, take a sparge into consideration. And I'm going to lose a lot into the holes and stuff that I won't be able to retrieve later. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. But this, at this stage, just this porridge in here. There's no, there's no um, dry spots in here at all. I've worked it over completely. But well, that porridge smells mighty fine. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my water in the tank here up to about um, 80, around 80 degrees, which sounds hella high, um, considering your uh, beta amylase starts dying, or prefers to work around 60 degrees, starts dying around, I think, uh, upwards of 70, uh, 65 degrees, and um, your alpha amylase, uh, I think, starts denaturing at about 72, I think, from memory. Uh, 
what I'm going to do though as I add this I'm going to add it very very gently and very very slowly and I'm going to mix the shit out of it so that um, that I don't get a hot spot in here that's hitting 80 or anywhere close to that um, and because this is all entirely malt um, even if I do denature a little bit of the grain um, there is so much um, diastatic power in there just to carry through the conversions on everything that, that, that there's a crazy amount of power in there um, so we'll start adding this in and I've just got to be mindful of the temperature I don't want it going over say six, uh, 64, 65 degrees centigrade so you'll add it Add it in here um, slowly at first, and as it starts getting more of a liquid slurry in here, I might start adding it a little bit faster, but that'll do to start with. It's just to stop the, any, any of the, the localised hot spots getting way too hot. So my goal is to get to 64 um, degrees centigrade, 63 degrees centigrade. If I've got extra hot water in that hot liquor tank, um, I can throw that in afterwards and drive it on up a bit closer to 70 for that alpha analyze once it's had a, a nice, nice set lower down. But, uh, yeah. As a distiller, I'm just after fermentability. I don't give a rat's ass about the um, the body of the beer. If this was a, we're essentially making it a beer without a hot boil. Um, I want the fermentability that's going to carry over through the still as alcohol. So again, I'm just going for the, the lower, lower temperature fermentability rather than uh, the higher temperature with the alcohol lays, which apparently for beer makers gives you uh, gives you your body in a beer. I don't give a rat's ass about the body of this. This is a, a, a whiskey wash for still. So that's up to 60 degrees now, um, which I wanted to get a bit higher than that, but you can see, uh, hopefully you can see from there, yeah, it's, it's a lot more sloppy now, it's gone from a, a really thick porridge to quite a, a sloppy sort of gruel, which makes it a lot easier to stir. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding more liquid in here, which will just steam things up, and we'll get it up to 63, 64, thereabouts. Oh, it's on uh, 63 degrees there now. It's nice and liquid. And uh, that'll do me. What I'll do now is pop the top on this. And give it a good mix. Make sure it's all evened out there properly. Let's give it a good stir there. And uh, pop the top on, let it sit for, for an hour or so, or just let it cool down uh, at its own rate. Um, it won't drop more than a couple of degrees, uh, which is, is where I want it anyway, over the span that the enzymes are active. Um, and unlike making a beer, I don't need to be dancing around in a fever 
uh, wanting to drop the temperature back or do my hot boil and then drop temperature back in a hurry and I'm distilling so it's all about fermentability uh, that's it for this stage um, I'll wait till it's cooled off and all the enzymes have done their, their uh, funky dance and um, I might come back and stir it once or twice during the next hour, hour and a half and um, I'll do my a, a gravity reading, initial gravity reading if um, anyone's wondering uh, why we only used half a barrel, that's, that's you know, you've only half filled that thing if that. Uh, this is a 44 gallon drum. Um, I had one sack of that really nice grain. Uh, so I've got, um, with the grain and the liquid and everything all told in there, I've got around just over 100 litres of material. Uh, the Barrels, the black barrels, uh, and some of my other videos that I make my rum and stuff in are 120 litres. Um, so if this thing got a bit of a hit on it, uh, I'm not leaving a lot of room um, for any uh, grain cap or, or any any fermentation that goes on. So uh, I'm better off brewing this guy, um, and the carbon dioxide that's coming off the ferment will still fill up and, and get rid of any bacteria or anything or any nasties that could form in there or any, any competition for my my, um, my yeast. Uh, another man might mix up um, a water sugar solution and top it up even further uh, and try and increase the yield. Um, I'm not doing that, I'm just going for the um, what I can get out of this really, really primo grain I've got. The, the malted barley. Um, if I was working with something a, 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 a less sort of prestigious grain, it's, it's a lot of beards heavily peated um, uh, malted barley, heavily peated, and it's imported from Scotland all the way to New Zealand. So it's it's not cheap. It's like most malted grains, they're not cheap. Uh, so I want to just make um, the best product I can out of this and see how I go with it. Well, we're a couple of hours later here, and uh, all that dark, sugary goodness looking uh, liquid there is our uh, work that we're going to introduce our uh, yeast to. All the um, grain has uh, sunk to the bottom there for, for the time being. Once we introduce the yeast and get it all going, there's usually going to be a cap of that stuff that will float to the top and, and forms a, a carlson. And the smell is just this really, oh, it's like a liquid cigar. It's a really pungent, smoky, beautiful smell. Oh, I can't wait to ferment this out and uh, and put it through the still really nice and slow. Oh, sorry, camera's all <laughs> camera's fogged up there. So we've got our um, work in the next morning here. It's cooled down. Um, there could be a grain bin underneath that, a little sunk to the bottom. And there's that nice smoky, uh, sort of beery looking liquid on top there, which is hopefully all full of sugars. And I've taken a sample out here, um, and poured it into my measuring cylinder, and it's just sitting on 20 degrees. Now, if my broadcast camera there can focus on that, but 20 degrees centigrade, and the reason for that is again I don't know if my broadcast camera is going to focus on that but um, maybe not your uh, instruments are calibrated to work at a certain temperature your hydrometer your alchemeter in my case all my stuff works around um, uh, on 20 degrees centigrade whether it's my hydrometer or my, my spirit and child hydrometer the alchemeter for my still um, so you, you, your calibration will be listed on the, the instrument. Specific gravity, 20 degrees centigrade, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, other thing while I'm here that um, is the meniscus reading that's always specced on there. Uh, the meniscus is the little little curve that forms at the side of a container like the uh, measuring cylinder in here. You can see the edge of the, um, the liquid turns up towards the edge. 
uh, it was a tractor towards the edge. This, this hydrometer is a uh, lower lower reading meniscus. You, you read from the bottom, the level of the liquid, not the top of the meniscus. Um, others, others will work slightly differently, it'll read from the top of the meniscus, but that'll be specced on the instrument. Um, so, it's at the right temperature to give me an accurate reading. And we'll pop our uh, hydrometer in here and see how well we did. <coughs> Ooh. We're looking at... I see nothing, nothing touching the top. <laughs> on, on a lot of this, the uh, distilling forums, anyone anyone showing a, a reading with a, a hydrometer or an alchemeter, part of the spec on, on a lot of the forums, is you don't touch, don't have anything uh, touching the top of the uh, instrument, or you show that nothing's totally touching the top of it. Just looking a bit closer, uh, we're sitting on 8.2, which is going to give us a potential yield of around between 10 and 11 percent, which I'm happy as a pig and shit over. Um, Again, we're not making a beer, we're making a uh, work for distilling. So we're just going, up, after all the fermentables, we sat on the low end of the scale between 60 and 70 degrees, which gave us more fermentables, uh, which we'll carry over. Um, what I'll do is I'll have a quick taste of this. I didn't do the iodine starch test while I was um, mashing. Um, <laughs> I don't think I need to bother at the moment, but I'll um, have a quick taste of this, see how it turned out. Yeah, that's really sweet and very, very smoky. That's gonna gonna make something very interesting. It's gonna make a smoke bomb for sure. So um, I'll pack up here and uh, get my yeast ready to go in there. I'm just making up uh, my um, yeast start or, or, or rehydrating my yeast. Uh, I've got dry active distillers yeast in here. Uh, is it somewhere around uh, 70 grams. Um, I'm going to, uh, oh, what I've got in here is um, half and half, about two litres total, two and a half litres total of um, the wort, and then the rest is in uh, water. So it's a dilute version of the wort that I've got in the, the barrel over there. And the reason for that is I want to rehydrate my yeast, or my, my way of thinking, I want to rehydrate my yeast, hence the water, but I also want to give them a, a um, little heads up on what they're going to be eating and the pro profile of the sugars and stuff that they're going to be attacking. So um, I've got that in there as well. So they can kind of wire themselves for the work they're going to be munching on. So I go ahead and gently pour that into here. Um, I'm going about ask about face at the moment. Um, normally I put my um, yeast on top of on, on top of the the work here, but um, a lot of the time uh, the you get granules of yeast that, that attach themselves to the side of the flask or, or, or the side of the um, spherical or, or down the sides of the, the conical. So um, I'll do it this way this time round. And uh, I've got every, everything's been cleaned down with star sand. If you, once you're dealing with your yeast, you um, don't want to dick around and, and, and risk contaminating your yeast and getting infections in there. So um, I kind of every, blast everything with this little star sand bottle that I've, I've made up. Um, a, a dilute bleach would probably work the same, um, but I've started going larger volumes and I've got all flash with this stuff. Uh, so that's going to sit. And um, and uh, hopefully start working, introduce the yeast to what it's doing, and um, I'll come back and have a look at that uh, this evening after work, and uh, make sure it's doing what it should, rather than just pitching it straight into the wort and hoping for the best. I'll do this little starter sample here and introduce that to the wort when I know it's working. I've just uh, got my wort in the barrel here. Um, Got in front of the window to get a bit of heat, but uh, it's a bit of a forlorn hope with the day being like it is. Um, 
I've just robbed the blanket off this, this barrel here, this is finished working. This was a, almost a full charge of a, another whiskey I'd done uh, a little, little while ago. Um, but it's finished working so I've robbed the barrel and the, uh, sorry, the uh, blanket and the barrel bands which are just um, strips of Velcro to hold the uh, blanket on the outside. And I'll pop the bubbler in there, that's just in there loosely to um, stop any, anything getting in there, any, any contamination with yeast or whatever, wild yeast. So I got back this evening after work and uh, the uh, starter here of the yeast has been bubbling away doing its thing. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of sediment down there, but uh, yeah, it's definitely been working away. When I got back, it actually had um, spat all the water out of the uh, airlock, which means it had been going gangbusters. So what I've got here now is um, star sand sanitised uh, bubbler there, and the uh, whisk. What I'm going to do, uh, I won't bother setting up the camera for, for this, but um, I've done it in other videos with the rum rum making and stuff. Um, is I'll just use the whisk here to uh, aerate, oxygenate the, the, the wort and then I'll um, pitch, pitch this yeast into the, into the wort once it's uh, aerated. Um, mention well first I'll show you what we're pitching into. Uh, there was a bit of a grain head on that where the uh, grain started rising up again as it does. It rises up, forms a head or crossin and then it sinks again after the um, yeast activity is over usually. So that's, that's what it it's getting pitched into, and the other thing I forgot to mention was um, pitching in with the yeast, um, at the same time as the yeast, um, a couple of packets of stuff here, this is uh, gluconeolase enzyme, and uh, what this stuff does is um, floats around in the wort and uh, chomps up any remaining uh, complex carbohydrates or complex sugars and ideally it, it um, knocks them down to glucose uh, sugars which um, the yeast can very very readily ferment and, uh, and use up so I'll throw those in with my yeast and uh, between the two of them that will um, give me a really good ferment. Uh, the cool thing about these is uh, again for brewing for distilling um, this can, these can potentially give you a few extra points of gravity um, during the, the process. The, the smell coming off this um, was fantastic. It smells like smoked jerky. I'm, ki I'm not kidding you. It, it's got that much of a pungent, um, peaty, smoky flavour to it. So uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very keen to see how this comes out. I came out to uh, light fire this morning and this thing is, is going nuts. Which is cool. Um, it started off about two hours after I pitched the yeast last night, um, just with a blip, 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 blip kind of thing going on. And uh, now it's in full swing. Uh, usually there's a, quite a latent period when you pitch yeast. It, it sits for, for at least a couple of hours or, or longer sometimes, you know, half a day or something before the um, least yeast acclim acclimates to, to what you've pushed it into and, and gets itself into gear. But uh, having hydrated it with a bit of the, um, the wort, it's already got the profile of what it's going to eat, I guess, and it, it just climbs straight into it. So the uh, next step is just to leave this to ferment out for, for however long it takes, and then uh, let it settle and then uh, distill it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.